said, if you're going to win souls, you've got to love souls. In spite of their meanness, in spite of the way they look, in spite of everything, you've got to seek to bring souls to Jesus Christ because you love them, because Jesus loved them, and because Jesus died for them, and you're trying to bring them to the Son of God. Good morning and welcome to Sandy Creek Stirrings. Thank you for listening today. We had a question come in, and I wanted to address it. I think it's a very valid question. The question was, what is an assistant pastor, and what does an assistant pastor do? And I think, you know, that's a very good and a very valid question. I think it's great that somebody is taking time to learn about the different positions on their church staff, of the church they go to, and to learn what they do. That's an important thing. You should know what the people on staff, what they're doing. And so I think it's a very good question, and so thank you for asking that. I wanted to take time today to answer that question on what is an assistant pastor, what does an assistant to the pastor do? And it's a great question, so thank you for sending that in and for asking that question. Before we get into actually answering that question today, I want to remind you that you can go to sandycreekstirrings.com. Again, that's sandycreekstirrings.com. You can go to the contact page and you can send in a question that you may have. Simply go to sandycreekstirrings.com, go to the contact page, and simply send in what question you would like answered. And of course, this one today doesn't necessarily deal so much with um, doctrine or a biblical question in that sense. It's more of a Oh, a, a church question, and so it's still a great question, and so thank you for sending that in, but you can too send in a question. You can also email those questions to joshua at sandycreekstirrings.com. Again, that's joshua at sandycreekstirrings.com, and thank you for those who have sent in questions. We have several that are waiting to be answered, and so we will answer those in a timely manner and make sure we get to each and every single one of those questions. Don't forget, you can always subscribe to Sandy Creek Stirrings on whatever platform you are listening on to have the uh, to have the episode sent directly to you, whether it be Spotify or Apple Podcast or Google Podcast or whatever platform you listen on. I know we have some listeners on Overcast, and so whatever platform you listen on, you can always hit that subscribe or that follow button, have the episode sent directly to you every time a new one is released, and so make 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 yourself available to that. And then, of course, you can follow us on Facebook, and you can get updates and see when the episodes are posted and released. And so make sure to do those things. Of course, you can always leave us a review as well on Facebook or Apple Podcast. And so today, let's dive into that question, what is is an assistant pastor? What does an assistant pastor do? And it's a very, very good question, and I appreciate the listener who sent that in. And let's take time to answer that today. You know, an assistant pastor, really, what does he do? It's really all defined, really, within the name. He simply assists the pastor. He assists the pastor. Now, let me be very clear. An assistant to the pastor is not the pastor, nor is he a pastor. In a church, there is one pastor. There is one under-shepherd. Now, let me be very clear. Let's go back a little bit. Who is in charge? Who is the head of the church? That would be Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the head of the church. You cannot get away from that in Scripture. But during this time where Christ is away, he is the great shepherd, During that time, he has left the care of the sheep with an under-shepherd. This would have been the terms that they used back in the Bible times. If the shepherd, the the main shepherd, would be gone, he would leave assistants, he would leave under-shepherds there to care for the sheep. In that sense, Jesus Christ, the great shepherd, he is gone. He is preparing a place for us, but he leaves with every little flock. He leaves an under-shepherd. He leaves somebody who knows how to shepherd, who can pastor and lead that flock of God. There is one pastor for each group. There is not multiple pastors in a church. That's why for me, and you know, I'm not necessarily against guys who who, who I'm about to define, but for me, I'm very careful. I call myself an assistant to the pastor. I am not, this is me, I am not an assistant pastor. Assistant pastor, when you say it like that, in my opinion, now, there may be some who disagree with me. I know some guys who call themselves assistant pastors. I don't have a problem with that. You can call yourself whatever you want. But for me, it gives a sense of 
that you believe to be, or you might believe, or it gives people a sense that maybe you're referring to yourself as a pastor as well. That's why I'm an assistant to the pastor. I don't want the people at my church to call me Pastor Josh or Pastor Jimenez or Pastor— in- No, no, no. There's already—for one, there's already a Pastor Jimenez here, and that's my dad. And uh, But for two, I'm not the pastor. I'm just not. I'm an assistant to the pastor. There is one pastor at Victory Springs Independent Baptist Church, and that is Pastor Patrick Jimenez. It is not Pastor Josh. I'm just not. I'm an assistant to the pastor. And so for me, that's something important to me. There's some guys who they're an assistant pastor, and I don't have a problem with that. You can call yourself whatever you want. I'm not going to fight over that, but I want to give people who are listening an idea of why do I term myself as an assistant to the pastor. That's simply because I'm not the pastor. I'm just assisting him. And that's all an assistant pastor does, whether you refer to yourself as an assistant to the pastor or assistant pastor, it really doesn't matter. Your job is to assist the pastor. And really, if you look at any major institution, from government to business to really anything, there's always a second man. There's always an assistant to the the leader to aid in the guidance and to help that establishment. I mean, even within the Bible itself, we see the role that assistants worked in to aid and benefit the men of God. You find Jethro, who was Moses' father-in-law in in Exodus 18, he gave counsel to establish assistants. He called them judges to help aid him in leading the people. As Moses gave them the law, remember, he's leading a couple million people. And this couple million of people that he's leading throughout this desert, through this wilderness, he's leading them. And Jethro goes to him and says, look, This is too great for you. There's too many. You need some assistance to help you in leading this people. You'll find Paul. He traveled on his great missionary journeys, but never without a faithful assistant at his side. You look at Silas, Timothy, Barnabas, Titus, Luke, even John Mark ended up traveling with him. I mean, you have to understand that there were always assistants helping in that position and helping the leader, holding up his hands. You find that story of Moses standing up on the mountain. Remember when the battle was going on between Joshua and those who would oppose him? And the battle was going on, and who stood up there assisting Moses, holding up his hands? It was Aaron and Hur. Not Hur, H-E-R, but Hur, H-U-R. And um, they were helping. They were assisting. And so the role of assistant pastor or assistant to the pastor is simply just someone who assists the pastor with building projects, hospital visits, I mean, incredible amounts of study and hundreds of other tasks. Our pastor, if there was nobody to assist him, whether whatever church you're at, it gets to a point where that pastor, it's going to be, if he has to handle all that as the church grows as it should, it's going to be too much. It's going to be too heavy. And like Moses, Moses, if there's no one to hold up his hands, the church could really just be this burden on their pastor to where he needs help. There's a lot of different things, as I said, building projects, hospital visits, I mean, incredible amounts of study that the pastor does. And at some point when that church is big and large, It's going to be too much for him. In fact, that's what Jethro told Moses. He said, this is too heavy for thee. This is too heavy for thee. And it's not that your pastor will fail. It's not that your pastor will fail you or fail the church. The pastor will do a great job keeping those ministries running fluidly. But sometimes an assistant to the pastor, really all the time when it's needed, An assistant to the pastor can greatly help the pastor by taking some of those burdens off of his shoulder and moving those to his plate to help the pastor be able to focus more time on really the most important thing of the church, and that's feeding the sheep. That's the most important part of being a pastor, feeding and caring for the sheep. Now, there's a lot that goes into that, but really the preaching and the teaching from the pulpit is really the most, in my opinion, the most vital aspect of being a a pastor. Now, there's so much more to being a pastor. Do not get me wrong. He needs to go out and be in people's homes. He needs to go out on visitation. He needs to be good at going to the hospitals and making visits. He needs to connect with his people. He needs to be a hospitable person. There's a lot that goes into being a pastor, but that preaching and teaching is vital. And so an assistant pastor comes along and assists with those other tasks that he can handle so the pastor can focus more time on studying for those preaching and teaching times. When I was just a young boy, I knew that God was calling me into the ministry. 
Now, I wasn't exactly sure what it, what exact part of that ministry would be, but at age 10, I knew that God was calling me to preach and to be a preacher. And so that desire has always been there since. Is it always easy? No. Um, do I get nervous? Absolutely. But for some reason in my heart, God has put a desire to be a preacher. And so my utmost desire was to always serve him in full-time ministry, for that to be, in essence, my job. All right? Now, I don't want to see uh, seem greedy or even presumptuous, but the reality is, is I wanted to do that full-time. I felt like that's what God wanted me to do. Full-time ministry, by the way, is not for everybody. It's just not. We need good laymen in the church. And by the way, if the church is to continue, the service and the work of God has to be placed in the hands of the lay people. A pastor has to be somebody who can encourage his lay people, the people within the church who aren't on full-time staff, to get the job done, to put the hand to the plow, and to do the work of the ministry, even though they're not on full-time staff. So we need good lay people. We, not everybody's called to full-time ministry, but I knew for me that's what God wanted. Now, it took a little while to get there. I remember I first really, truly, I started serving in that role of assistant to the pastor when I first came back. That's basically what I did. I still worked a full-time job at the hardware store. and um, But one day in December of, this would have been November actually, of 2019, I finally came on full-time staff, as in I was able to quit my job, and Victory Springs started paying me to be the assistant to the pastor to fulfill that, to make that my full-time position. And some people may ask, they say, you know, can an assistant pastor work a job if he can? For instance, I was. I was working a job, and I was still doing some of those positions. Was it really necessary then for the church to pay me? Couldn't I have just kept doing what I was doing? And that's a good question. I want to answer that at the end. But let's talk about the roles. What does an assistant to the pastor do day to day? What does an assistant to the pastor do? Now, this may vary as far as the roles of an assistant to the pastor. It may vary from church to church. For instance, some churches have large staff. I mean, they've got a bunch of different staff members, and they've got people who are over certain positions. And so some of these roles that I may list, there may be a guy at your church on full-time staff who handles that entire role, who handles that entire position. Sometimes there are churches where there's just two to three guys on staff. Typically, a lot of churches that run, I don't know, 200, 300 maybe, uh, 250. They'll have like three guys on staff. They'll have the pastor. They'll have the um, the assistant to the pastor, and then they'll typically have a youth director. And uh, but some smaller churches, my church, uh, well, we run just under 180s, 70s on Sunday morning, somewhere in there. And uh, so we only have two on full time staff. That would be me and my father, who is the pastor. And so right now, some of the roles that I have, one day as we grow larger as a church, when we start hitting higher numbers, we may add another person on staff to handle some of these duties because as it adds more people, the duties get more and more in depth. But here's some of the duties that an assistant to the pastor might or might not do depending on the number of people on staff. Number one, whether how many people are on staff or not, it doesn't really matter. An assistant to the pastor is always involved in visitation. Now, there are several different types of visitation. Each one is critical to the growth of a church. For instance, you have soul winning. That's going out and finding new people and witnessing to them. You have follow-up visits. You have membership visits going up and following up with people who have visited the church, you follow up with them to try and get them back into church. You have membership visits. Just going by and visiting with your members. That's a vital visit. Your membership, they need visits from the pastoral staff. I'll tell you, one of the big ways that Victory Springs grew was we would go visit people uh, when they visited the church, and they would look at us in our area and say, this is the first time a pastor has ever been in my house. That's sad. A pastor and the pastoral staff should be out visiting the members. Then you have hospital visits. Uh, You go visit the people who are sick, who are in the hospital. Then you have just ministry visits in general. Uh, Go visit your Sunday school class. Go visit the bus route. Go visit just ministry visits in general. Each of these, each of these uh, visitation roles or visits play a vital part in church growth. I mean, we must be going door to door with the gospel. We must be visiting those who have who have visited the church. And so, you know, someone once said though that a home going pastor makes a church going member. A home going pastor makes a church going member. And so doing all these visits, by the way, if a pastor has to do these by himself, 
All right, if a pastor has to make all these visits and he's by himself, there's going to be so many visits he won't be able to make them all. One of them is going to be sacrificed, whether it's soul winning, whether it's membership visits, whether it's just a hospital visits, something's going to be sacrificed. It's too many. There's a lot of visits. And so a, an assistant pastor comes along and he assists. He may go to the hospital for some visits. He'll go visit some membership. He'll do some of the follow-up visits. And he'll take some of those visits that need to be done and he'll take it off the pastor's shoulder. Another thing that the assistant to the pastor does is he helps with discipleship. Now, it has been said that Baptists do a wonderful job of getting people saved and baptized, but we have failed horribly, horribly at discipling people. You know, teaching them the baby step doctrines of the faith, teaching them how to reach others with the gospel. And so this discipleship, It happens, obviously, a person can't be discipled if they're not going to be faithful to church. It's just not going to happen. But when that person gets faithful to church, typically a church has a discipleship class or a discipleship program. And typically what that involves is somebody meeting once a week or once every other week with a baby Christian and discipling them, teaching them the baby steps of the faith. Typically they'll go through a book or curriculum or some sort of something that the church has allocated for discipleship, and that person will meet together once a week and help to disciple that person. An assistant to the pastor helps in that area. Unless he does it in some sort of classroom setting, a pastor cannot, he doesn't have the time to be able to disciple every single person who gets saved in the church. He just doesn't have time for it. There's a lot. And so the assistant of the pastor helps to come along and assist him in helping to disciple those baby Christians. Another thing that assistant to the pastors will do, they'll do coordination throughout the week. Now, whether it be for upcoming events or special services or fundraisers or future programs or special meetings, the assistant to the pastor, sometimes the pastor will say, hey, I need you to look into da-da-da. At at our church at Victory Springs, we have coming up just not too far away, we have our six-year anniversary coming up. And pastor sat down with me just a week ago and said, hey, I want you to start looking at some things as far as what we can do for a special lunch on that day. You see, by doing that, I'm assisting him. I'm freeing up his time. He would have spent time looking up lunch and, you know, is a, is a, is a getting a food truck here an option? Is getting it catered an option? Is it uh, having people make stuff? Is that an option? All that time spent in trying to develop those thoughts are now transferred over to the assistant and he can spend that time looking up those things, getting all the prices. And then a good assistant to the pastor, by the way, takes that back to the pastor and says, here's the options. What do you think is best? What do you want to do? and the pastor will make the decision. And so the assistant really helps in coordinating those different events, those upcoming events, special services, fundraisers, future programs, special meetings. The assistant of the pastor helps to take some of the coordination off of the pastor's shoulders and do it himself. Another way is maintenance. Maintenance. Now, a lot of churches, some churches, have maintenance uh, groundskeepers that they have hired and employed, and that's great especially if you have large facilities. We have a small building here, so in general, I help with the maintenance. We have a lot of great members who have stepped up to the plate and help in the maintenance of the building. I mean, you've got all sorts of things that need to be done at the church. There, There's always things in need of repair. The, the baseboards always need to be painted. The door jams always need to be painted. I mean, the ceiling tiles have got to be changed out. Uh, you got leaks to seal in the building. You've got simple plumbing tasks. You've got, you know, the toilet handle breaks. You've got the wax seals leaking. You know, you've got all these different things. There's paint that needs to be done. There's carpet that needs to be washed. There's uh, things that need to be dusted. And we have members who have stepped up to the plate and helped with cleaning. But there's so many other maintenance things, whether it be outside or inside. There's all kinds of maintenance things to always be done at the church. That's a full-time job. But an assistant pastor in a smaller church can come alongside the pastor and help the pastor who would have been up there on Saturday nights painting the baseboards and the door jams. The assistant pastor can now go up with the help of other people, and he can now get those jobs done so the pastor can focus on being in the office and um, and continuing to study. Another thing that the assistant to the pastor might help is with the technology and media. Now, some churches have a full tech guy. Um, They employ him. He's a full-time staff. He handles everything. That's typically a larger church. And so at my church, I handle all the technology and the media, um, from building and maintaining recording uh, databases, um, from social media to website to design of materials to ordering supplies. Um, That's something that at my church I handle. It's part of my position. 
So if we have a big day, um, I order cards, invitation cards. I design them, and I have them printed, and I order them, and I get all the receipts and everything to our secretary to put into the checkbook. Um, if we need new tracks, I get those ordered. I talk with the um, whoever makes the tracks, and I send them our logo. I get all the files prepared. Um, sometimes I design the tracks ourselves. With the websites, I do all the updates, and I make sure all of those things are handled. On social media, I handle the social media posts and doing all that and the fundraisers and the advertising and the things of those sort. All those things go into the techno technology and the media side. Every year at our church, and it's probably the same way at your church, we have a theme for the year. There's a lot that goes in to planning the theme for your church. Um, the posters have to be printed that are typically hanging at the front of the auditorium. There's other literature at our church. We have a trifold brochure with all the different goals we have for the year. Those have to be designed. Those have to be printed. And there's a lot that goes in. That literally can be a full-time job as the church gets larger, at least in my church. And who knows, at your church, you may already have somebody on staff who handles that. Thank God for him, because there's a lot that he does. Um, I mean, you go into downloading messages and making CDs for people. That's a that's almost a full-time position in and of itself. And so that staff guy, as far as that technolo technology guy, he is vital in keeping good materials in the hands of the people and keeping a good influence in the technolo technological world, if I can pronounce that right, and keeping people up to date. Um, I mean, we have a way in today's world that we can access more people like never before. And so an uh, assistant to the pastor or a staff guy can really help with that. An assistant to the pastor helps with record keeping. I mean, Sunday school attendance, bus route, service attendance, nursery, he helps in aiding in those areas. And then in general, he just helps in some miscellaneous areas. For instance, um, before I came on staff, our pastor handled a lot of duties that, frankly, with my full-time job, I didn't have a whole lot of time for. For instance, our pastor, I would design the bulletin. We do a bulletin every Sunday. And so I would design the bulletin, and I would send it over to him. He would have to print them. Now, that doesn't seem like a whole lot of work, but imagine printing double-sided um, all these bulletins and then having to fold them. It can take a little bit. And so he would do that. Um, contacting missionaries um, was something he did. Contacting visitors was something he did all by himself. Sending cards and letters out was something he did all by himself. Um, sending out the—we do EDDMs at our church every door to direct mail and sending out flyers to every single door. And so that's something that I've been able to come alongside our pastor and help him with just some generic duties that really, if we just free up all those things, it gives him more time to be in the office and to be able to study and do those things. An assistant to the pastor will obviously help with some study time. An assistant of the pastor probably has a Sunday school he teaches. Um, if he's if he's like me, if it's a smaller church, I am not only the assistant to the pastor, but I'm the youth director as well. And so I've got the Sunday school to teach. I've got junior church to teach. Um, and so I'm always working on those, developing future lessons, future series to go through, and I'm making sure we go through those times. I develop the weekly activity, not weekly, the monthly activities for our teen group. And so you got to sit down, you got to plan those, plan the games, plan what you're going to do, plan the activity, plan the cost, plan all that, and uh, submit it to the pastor. And so it's enjoyable, it's great, I love it. But some of those things can become, I'll be honest with you, a little tedious in developing all those things, but it's so worth it when you see the results. But we plan the, uh, the teen activities. Whoever is on your staff as the youth director, you need to go at your church, you need to go and thank that guy for what he does for your teenagers of your church. He's a vital part of the ministry in helping to guide and direct those teenagers. I guarantee you he prays for them on a daily basis. He spends time lifting your teenagers before the Lord in prayer every single day. He has a vital role. Um, here, as, here as the assistant pastor at Victory Springs, not only do I handle the teen group, but I plan monthly activities for our Pringles group. You say, what are Pringles? Those are, it's an acronym. It stands for People Realizing It Normally Gets Lonely Except Sundays. And that's our singles group, the 30 or under 30 typically. 
uh, singles group. And so I plan the monthly activities for them. And so there's a lot that goes into that. We won't go any further. And then there's looking at the individual ministries that an assistant to the pastor will help in. Some of these ministries um, your church may have, for instance, the teens, bus routes, Sunday school, maybe even a church school, like a literal school, um, Bible Institute, and nursing home ministries, the local government ministries, community outreaches. Your assistant to the pastor, whoever he may be, is probably involved in a lot of those different areas and reaching out and helping to coordinate those things together. Now, the question is, can an assistant to the pastor still work a full-time job and be an assistant to the pastor? And the answer is absolutely. Absolutely he can. He can be an assistant to the pastor and still work a full-time job. Now, there's obviously a a hand-clapping cheer. Yay, that solves our issue. The problem is all those duties that I listed, even though technically I was the assistant to the pastor at Victory Springs Independent Baptist Church, and uh, but I still worked a full-time job, all those duties that I listen, listed that an assistant pa- to the pastor helps with, I didn't do all those. You say, why? You're, you're an assistant pastor. That's your job. Why didn't you do it? I don't have time. Frankly, after working a full-time job and getting home you know, at dinner time every night, I didn't have time for every single one of those duties and tasks. Our pastor uh, stepped up to the plate, and he handled most of those tasks himself. I wasn't able to. I did not have the time. And so by taking your assistant to the pastor, whoever he may be at your church, and allowing him to walk away from a secular job and serve on full-time staff, he is able to do so much more in assisting. That's what you're paying him for, to assist the pastor. Whatever it may be, he's assisting the pastor. By paying him full-time to do that, you are freeing up his time to be able to do so much more. I mean, from coordinating more music groups together, planning the music schedule for the month, planning the hymns that will be sang every single week, planning the choir songs, planning the choir, leading the choir, being involved in those activities and those things. He's able to take all those on his shoulder and to be able to help the pastor and assist the pastor in handling those different things. By the way, you throw on the load of a church school, a Bible institute, those other ministries that a lot of churches have, You're talking about a lot of work. And so by allowing your assistant to the pastor to come alongside and serve on full-time staff, you're being a blessing to him in more ways than one. You're also being a blessing to him financially, but you're being a blessing to him as a family. You see, that assistant to the pastor still has a family to care for. He still has a family he needs to spend time with. I'll be honest with you, one of the most difficult things for me, um, I was doing Bible college online, I was doing a full-time job, I was doing the assistant to the pastor, and I had a family. One of the biggest struggles I had in my early time after marriage and having children and, and doing all those different things that I just mentioned, one of the difficult struggles I had was how to divide up my time. You see, because on my day off from work, I had to work. I had another full-time job I was doing as an assistant to the pastor. And so sometimes, if we're not careful, the family can be swept aside. And I've seen too many pastor's kids and too many pastor's children who the dad was so busy. The dad was so busy. And I can understand why. The father was so busy that his children ended up not respecting him and having the relationship that they should have with him, and they ended up falling out of church because of the division of time. It can be very difficult. And so when Victory Springs brought me and my family on staff full-time, it was one of the most tremendous blessings to me because I was able to leave my full-time job as as a manager at a hardware store. I came away and I was able to be on full-time staff. You know what that allowed me to do? On my day off at the church, which is on Mondays, I can now spend time with my family, and my family alone. That is their day. That's my wife's day. She gets to choose what we do on Mondays. Nothing interrupts that. She, her day is Monday. That's her day. Before, I would have to be planning Sunday school lessons and doing all those different things that I would coordinate together. 
So it's very important to understand that, yes, a guy can be an assistant to the pastor and still work a full-time job, and who knows, probably do a lot better than I did. That's for sure. That's a fact. He can do a lot better than I did. But it is an absolute blessing when you can bring that guy and say, hey, we want you to be on full-time staff as the assistant to the pastor. So an assistant to the pastor, what does he do? Um, What's his role? Well, he simply just assists his pastor in the many different ways that we've talked about. And he's absolutely a a valuable role in the growth and future of the church. And so you need to thank God for your assistant pastor, whoever he is at your church, and thank him for what he does. And uh, he's got a lot on his plate. And I don't say that because I'm an assistant to the pastor. I'm just saying that whoever he is, you need to go and thank him and uh, whoever it is at your church for what he does. And um, I thank God for all the assistant pastors across America who are on full-time staff, who are willing to take these duties and assist their pastor, and what a blessing they can be. So to that person who sent in that question, I hope that answers yours. For those of you who didn't send in the question, I hope it was interesting enough today for you to listen all the way through and hear what an assistant to the pastor does in his role, and really a valuable role in the growth and future of the church. Now, I hope you continue to listen to Sandy Creek Stirrings. Of course, we release episodes now on Tuesdays and Fridays. If you have any questions, you can always send those in at joshua at sandycreekstirrings.com. Joshua at sandycreekstirrings.com. But until next time, my friend, keep looking up and keep stirred up for the cause of Christ.